Some say history is a river that flows endlessly. I say that history is a series of stories written by each person's experiences. Welcome to Stories, a history of Appalachia, one story at a time. Hello once again, folks. Welcome into the podcast. I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins. And today, Rod has a bit of a ghost story to tell us, don't you, Rod? Yes, I do. And, you know, we don't exactly save our ghost stories for October no, no. or the last part of October. But when they're interesting enough, we're going to bring them to you here on the podcast. And if you're not familiar with this one, we're going to talk about a location in the town of Abingdon, Virginia. Now, that's one of the oldest, at least, towns of what we have in southwestern Virginia. And it's right there on the... Uh, how can I say this? Right on the edge of the Virginia Highlands as it goes, Steve, and you're familiar with it because yes. you like to ride the creeper trail every now and then and bicycle, but Abington is a very quaint town. It's a very historic town, and in, well, in Abington, Virginia, I guess a lot of people don't like to talk about ghost stories, but they do like to talk about the tavern and the tavern restaurant and its little ghost story. Let me tell you a little bit about it. The Tavern Restaurant is a great place to spend a Friday or Saturday night with the family, enjoy some wine, and eat some great food. Now, the history of the building is intriguing. It's The tavern uh, served as a hospital during the Civil War times and has seen its share of tragedy. Now, the tavern's official website breaks down the lovely building's history. Now, the tavern is one of the oldest of Abingdon's historic buildings and one of the oldest west of the Blue Ridge, and it was built in 1779. It was used from its beginning as a tavern and overnight inn for stagecoach travelers. Now, the tavern had such guests as Henry Clay, Louis Philippe, King of France, President Andrew Jackson, Old Hickory himself, Pierre Charles Le Enfant, the designer of Washington, D.C., now, the first post office on the western slopes of the Blue Ridge was located in the east wing of the tavern. Now, the original mail slot is still in place and can be seen today from the street, and I have seen it before. Yes. So, I always wondered what it was. Now, I know. Well, during the past two centuries, the tavern has served as a tavern, a bank, a bakery, general store, cabinet shop, barber shop, private residence, post office, antique shop, and restaurant. It even served as a hospital, as I mentioned, for wounded Confederate and Union soldiers during the Civil War. Now, another location in the town of Abington that also served as an infirmary for those soldiers was the Martha Washington Inn. And hopefully we'll talk about uh, some of the history that goes with the Martha Washington Inn a little bit later on. But in 1965, the tavern was acquired from the Thaddeus Harris family by Mary Dudley Porterfield, who was the wife of the founder of the Barter Theater, Rex Porterfield. The Harris family had owned the tavern for more than 100 years. In 1984, the tavern was restored to its former glory by a local attorney, Emmett F. Yeary. And then in 1994, it was opened under the management of Max Herman, who moved to Abingdon in 1993 after having served 20 years with the United States Air Force. Max is a native German and lives in Abingdon with his wife, Kelly. Now, what's so special about this? Well, of course, a place of this stature would not be complete without a few ghost tales. We Be Haints, which is a website dedicated to the history of the lovely town, discusses the hauntings that can be found at the tavern. If you go down the street from the cave house is the oldest, according to Emirate, the most haunted building in Abingdon. Now, the tavern, as I said earlier, dates from 1779, and Emirate says that it's packed from the rafters to the cellars with ghosts. Uh, foremost among the resident ghosts is the tavern tart. Now, I wonder if you would know what the tavern tart might be, Steve. Hmm. The tavern tart? Well, not that I know a whole lot of tavern tarts, but I'm going to guess that that probably was a young lady of the night. You are correct. A young prostitute. And as a matter of fact, the tavern tart was murdered at the tavern by a client. Now, Emmert says that the tart still has an eye for men and loves to... Well, get this, Steve. Now, this is supposedly true. I've never been in the tavern, but I've wanted to find out for myself if this was really true. Supposedly, the tavern tart still has an eye for men and loves to 
pinch or grab a man's backside, or for short, grab their butts. Oh, I guess I know where I'm going to go have lunch this weekend. (laughs) (laughs) Well, she'll also watch out the window and stare at men as they cross the street. Mm. She looks for them. She's vindictive. She has a jealous spirit, and there are certain women that she does not like. Now, she's been known to go, supposedly, and if the men are in there, she will pinch their behinds. And she's been known on many of occasion to supposedly pull the chair out from underneath the females that accompany the men Ooh. into the tavern. And the women have been known to take quite a crash when they hit the floor. Now, she is that kind of vindictive, jealous spirit. Now, ladies, let me just go ahead and tell you, if you plan on coming to Abingdon, you'll have to take the tour to find out to see if you qualify. That's as simple as I can say it. There are many other ghosts at the tavern, and Emirate uh, recommends a visit to the tavern for a good meal and a nice chat with the wait staff about their own encounters. Now, there have been a number of the hired help that have had encounters before, everything from doors opening up, uh, cooler doors closing on them while they've been in the cooler and uh, the lock not go off or things like that. But they all talk about the tavern tart. And she was a unique person, but she was murdered inside the uh, inside the walls of the tavern sometime by one of her, um, well, clients that uh, obviously did not like the way she was doing things or just did not like her attitude. And he took care of her. But, you know, what's interesting about this, Steve, is every year uh, they have a time in Abingdon where they go and they walk the streets and they have a, a, a lady there that goes and she takes you past several houses and she also takes you by the tavern and she talks about the tavern and she talks about this same incident and she tells about what's going on. And like I said before, I've never been there, but I've wanted to go and find out, is this for real? Now, it would probably be my luck. She probably won't do anything with me. She'll probably pull the chair out from under me. That'd be my guess. I, you know, I know it's... I'm not a woman in that case, but she'd probably be vindictive. She probably just wouldn't like my style. I don't know. But uh, if you plan on traveling to Abington in the next little while, we would encourage you to go by the tavern and find out all about it and find out the stories that have been passed along there at the tavern, the historical significance of what it used to be back from the Revolutionary War all the way through the Civil War and even till today where it uh, still stands and it's uh, currently run in Abingdon, Virginia by Max Herman and his family. Wow, and that's the story of the Tavern Tart. I like that, Rod. That's a good story. Well, it's a, it's a unique story, and there's there's so many more of these stories from all over the Appalachian region, mm-hmm. and hopefully we'll get a chance to kind of focus on these during the course of our podcast over the next few weeks and months. We'll be looking forward to it. And that's it for this episode of Stories. We appreciate you listening. If you'd like to subscribe to the podcast, you can do so at iTunes or at Stitcher or at your favorite Android or Windows Phone podcast app. We're also on Facebook. We'd love it if you come by and like us. We've had lots of new folks come by and and like the uh, Facebook page. Appreciate that. You can also follow us on Twitter at Story Appalachia. So till next time, y'all take care, and we'll see you then. So long, everybody.